Joining me now, contributor to The Daily Wire, Alicia Krause. Alicia, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, Alicia, this is crazy. I mean, the, the reason, <laughs> the primary reason I care about California isn't even because I live here. Uh, that's, sort of, that's sort of a secondary reason. The primary reason is because what happens in California is then mm -hmm. disseminated to the rest of the nation. What happens in California first soon comes to every other state, include the, including those Midwestern states who right now feel uh, insulated from the radical policies that's happening in California. But if you look at the ballot in California, there are more socialist candidates this election than I have ever seen before. There are so many socialist candidates and also the lots of peace and part, freedom party, which it's interesting that they even included freedom in there considering that socialism tends to take away people's freedoms. But, the, you know, we can move on to another point here. Governor Jerry Brown, who has served four terms, two of them in the 70s and then two of them in this decade, as governor of the state, has frequently said what you just said. And he wears it as a badge of honor that typically the Democratic and liberal policies that are implemented here in California are then followed by other states all across the nation and taken as wins for the Democratic Party on the federal level and in the other 49 states in the nation. And it's so interesting that, you know, really, Democrats keep winning here, despite the fact that we are 39th in the nation when it comes to our public schools, despite the fact that in the last five years, we've lost 10 percent of our population who is fleeing because of our high tax rates and our high owner home ownership. Uh, covered California is a sham. There's over $120 billion in pension liabilities. I don't understand what Democrats have done that have positively influenced this state. And I really think that, that Democrats in the state should take note. Um, look at what Amazon is saying to the city of Seattle, who just decided to tax them more. I think Silicon Valley and Hollywood brings us a lot of money. Uh, but those industries can and probably will be scared off if Democrats keep negatively affecting California's economy in the ways that they want to. Right. Well, that's a key question that I think a lot of voters ask ourselves when we walk into the ballot box. We ask ourselves, and this was obviously uh, a key, it, it was a key uh, political talking point in the Ronald Reagan campaign, are you better off now than you were before? Mm -hmm. And when Californians look at their quality of life, look at how much taxes that we have to pay every day, look at you know the terrible quality of our roads, the fact that Cal the California state government in Sacramento takes so much of our money and spends it to further their agenda, not to make our lives safer and secure mm -hmm. or more prosperous. I don't think Californians can confidently say that we are doing better now after eight years of Jerry Brown than we were before. No, and I think that Gavin Newsom, who's currently polling 21 percent, there's actually 39 percent of California voters that say that they're undecided in our June 5th election, which is just fascinating. Uh, we all know that it, Gavin Newsom has, of course, former mayor of the city of San Francisco. He went against the Prop 8 decision and was one of the first mayors in the country to um, marry homosexual couples. He also, he's now lieutenant governor, and it looks like he's going to win. It, fortunately, it looks like we might actually have a Republican on the ballot in November for those of us that are watching that aren't in California. Hi, mom. Um, the, our state has this weird two-tier system where the top two candidates, even if they're from the same party, end up on the ballot in November uh, based on the January 5th primary vote. So it looks like we might actually have a Republican, John Cox, that's running against Newsom, uh, could end up on the ballot in November. But Newsom is just going to continue the policies of Jerry Brown, and he's really trying to make a name for himself much like Senator Kamala Harris is as well, because he wants to be the new Democratic darling and make way for him to run for president one day. Right, exactly. Well, that was gonna that was gonna be the point, sort of the evidence that California is patient zero. You know, we're the first, we do these radical policies first and then we infect the rest of the country with them. You can see that just based off of the Democratic leadership in our party right mm -hmm. now. Nancy Pelosi from California, she was the former chair of the California Democratic Party. Kamala Harris, she's now, you know, she wants to be the up and coming uh, social justice warrior in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Javier Becerra, our attorney general here, he was a former congressman. These are the people who want to be the power players in the Democratic Party. What happens in California? goes to other states next. Alicia, you did a really funny article, I thought, on the Daily Wire uh, about the California Voter Guide. Each candidate in the Voter Guide gets sort of a one-sentence pitch for themselves to introduce themselves to uh, people who may not have been following along. Some of the things that these candidates said is absolutely insane. I don't want to give their names airtime because they're so ridiculous here, but I also want to know, I want people to know who who actually said what thing, uh, what things, because there's a candidate called, uh, I think running for U.S. Senate named Ling Ling Shi, who said that we should nullify the 2016 U.S. presidential <laughs> election and that the U.S. should, quote, rehold the 45th U.S. presidential election. What, what, what is this nonsense, Alicia? Does this person think that Hillary Clinton has a chance still to be president? 
it, this isn't the only person. I mean, Ling Ling Shi, to her credit, was the only one that I guess was bold enough to say that she actually just wanted to completely rescind the 2016 election results. But a lot of other candidates, from Bursera to others that you mentioned there, talked about the hashtag resistance or talked about how they fought the NRA or talked about how Time Magazine has named them as climate change makers, whatever that is supposed to mean. So, I mean, people in California, like I said in the piece, the left is considered conservative here and the lefter is more on the mainstream for California Democrats. There are lots of people that seem to think that Trump is the big bad guy. And don't forget, Liz, you're also supposed to mention the candidate that said that trans rights are more important than business rights, whatever that means. I, I don't know, but we're transphobic if we don't agree with it. We're probably transphobic just for mentioning it. Um, <laughs> it, it is scary to think about. You're right. The lefter is the new left, but that's what we saw in 2016. The fact that so many people uh, supported Bernie Sanders, you know, feeling that burn. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he's very open about the fact he's proud of the fact that he is a socialist so that that's sort of the new I think iteration of the Democratic Party which is terrifying there's a candidate uh, I think for Congress his name is John Thompson he is uh, the peace and freedom party that you mentioned basically that's the socialist party they just don't call themselves the socialist party this is what he says this is his campaign slogan end capitalism don't enable it um, that's horrifying <laughs> and that could be why we've seen, you know, 10 percent, like I mentioned, of California's population fleeing the state. There's businesses fleeing the state. We're the state that is the hardest for small businesses to get started, let alone succeed. And I think that that's a real problem, considering how important small businesses are for the whole of the American economy. And by the way, most small businesses are owned and operated by women. So if the Democratic Party in the state of California wants to be pro-women, then they should be pro-small business and knock it off with these horrible policies that they're implementing in Sacramento. That's right. Democrats in Sacramento, you listen to Alicia. She's got that right. You want to support women, you support small businesses. Th this is an interesting strategy question, though, Alicia. California is uh, a very known Democratic state. I mean, obviously, and we just laid out exactly why, but it hasn't always been like that. It's not historically mm -hmm. been uh, a blue state here. I mean, we had even back as far as Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan won as a Republican governor here twice. Ronald Reagan is arguably the most conservative modern uh, president in modern times in our country's history. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, not exactly your most conservative Republican, still a Republican. Mm -hmm. He won uh, the governorship here. That's in recent times. What changed to make, you know, just up and down the coast, what changed to make this state so democratic? Honestly, it's because we're a sanctuary state and because now we are allowing illegal immigrants and registering illegal immigrants to vote. You've seen as there's been a decline in, uh, I guess you could say, Caucasian American or mixed race members of our society here in California and the Hispanic uh, population has increased, so have the Democratic voter rolls. I mean, just recently, I believe in 2016, it from from 2014 to 2016, the Republican voter registration rolls went from 31% of registered Republicans to, I believe, 27 or 28%. Just in two years, we saw a 3% drop, and it's going to continue to happen. I think the only hope that Republicans have in this state is to continue to push that small government is better for everyone, that national security is very important. And another issue you and I have talked about on the show numerous times, school choice, because it's an issue that works across all party lines that libertarians, Democrats, and Republicans can get on board for. In addition to that, I mean, you look at the leading California politicians, you name Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, and others, they're all 70 plus. So maybe if we can get some young Republican blood in there and on the state and local level, local level is so important. There could be hope for the, Republic, for the Republican Party here.